on lap 92 of the 2021 Southern Point 400 at Las Vegas, Joey Gase had a very scary and bizarre wreck in which going to turn 1 and 2, he lost his left rear tire, which caused the car to come around and started darting backwards toward the outside wall, with him going out of view. NBC cuts to the next shot in which the car is riding the wall for a long while before the car comes to rest before the, before the car comes off the wall and bounces around for a couple hundred yards before coming to rest on the inside part of the track. This is one of the most interesting crashes I've ever seen, as we really don't get to know how the car got on top of the wall, as these two camera shots, plus these photos that were shown a little later, don't really give us the idea, well, as well as the impact when it got into the wall. That's what I'll be doing today in this video. We'll be analyzing Joey Gase's crash, frame by frame, shot by shot, and using references to past crashes over the years in NASCAR to give us an idea of how Gase hit the wall and how he got on top of it in the first place, and to combine all this into one final verdict. So let's try to solve this little mystery. The first thing we're going to do is to look at is where is Gase's car at the time of him spinning. He's in turn 1 and 2, obviously, but for reference, he spins between this yellow sign and this white local IQ sign. After this, he goes up the racetrack, but like I said before, there is a cut from this to where he rides the wall, not showing the initial impact into the wall. In that shot, it shows Gase riding the wall, between the South Point sign and the UMG sign, not too far from when the car came around. And even in these photos, where we see Gase again, now it's hard to tell if he's on the wall or still in the air, off the wall, as the angle doesn't really help us. You can't see this black mark on the wall, and this could have been by the UMG sign, and this could have been where he made the impact with the wall. But you can see in this clip, the car is still riding the wall even before this, so this couldn't have been where he made the initial impact. So where is it? Well, I think it could be between the Pirelli sign and the South Point sign. As you can see, black marks on the wall. So this could have been the likeliest spot, and due to where the car seems to be going after it spins in the middle of the corner. So there's a likely theory on that, but now here comes the most interesting part. How did Gase's car get on the wall in the first place? In this, I'll be going over two past NASCAR crashes that could give us an idea of how the first impact of the wall could have gone. Okay, let's take a look at this one, Jamie McMurray's 2003 New Hampshire crash, as an example. You can see McMurray's car back into the wall at a good amount of speed. This impact causes the back of the car to lift off the ground, but it doesn't go on the wall. And the second impact shortly after picks the right side of the car off the ground. This could be similar to what happened to Gase, as, as the direction of his car is almost or as close to the same as McMurray's crash. And judging by Gase's primary source of damage being at the back of the car, this could be the likeliest reason. So we have an idea of how he impacted the wall, but how do we explain the wall riding? Let's go a couple years later to the Eric McClure crash, also at New Hampshire in 2007. You can see him riding the wall almost in the same way that Gase was. Even for the first few frames, his car is completely off the ground. Except the car wasn't fully on top of it. And when McClure comes to rest, most of the damage is towards the back of the car, like Gase's crash. Also, the initial impact with the wall isn't shown. But how can we put this together? Well, I decided to do a little experiment myself to solve this. The remote here will represent the car, the side of the book will represent the wall, and the top of the book will represent the top of the wall. And by this, the car backs in the wall, like McMurray's crash, the back of the car comes off the ground, and it would go on the wall, the left side, the left side of the left front would also hit the wall, bringing the car on top of it, which would slide on it, before coming to rest. I have seen many people say Gase's car could have gone airborne before it even hit the wall. Now, I've watched NASCAR for about 14 years now, and I've even looked at older NASCAR wrecks, and I've never seen a car go airborne in the middle of a corner, on the banking by itself, not by the assistance of, assistance of another car, just by itself. Not even on super speedways. I can't say that we can't, can't rule this out, but you never know. I've also been thinking that the tire off Gase's car could have helped it get on the wall, as it is still present when the car goes as it goes towards the wall. But I don't think the tire would have had enough force to make the car go up any fur any farther. So that could rule out that theory as well. 
In short, Joey Gase's crash is still a mystery, and I hope I gave you at least a good idea of how this could have happened. But now, I want to hear from you. I know that most of my viewers aren't in NASCAR, but if you are from NASCAR, from the NASCAR, com but if you are from the NASCAR community who's watching this video, I would love to hear your feedback on this, giving me some further insight on what I could have missed and that I didn't cover from this crash would be helpful. So with that, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.